Hello fellow crafters, I'm Karen and this is part two of the Winter Fairy Garden Bookstore video. In this video you'll see how to get to this finished product, picking up where we left off at step five in part one. The materials and tools that you'll need for this part of the project are up there on the screen. Notably, you'll want to pick up where you left off in the pieces from part one, so you'll need all of those completed pieces. And then in this phase, we're going to do a lot of painting and a lot of attaching things to the overall structure and to the base. And we'll also need all of the materials that go inside of the building, which is mostly cardboard and craft foam, as well as the rocks and moss that will be used to create the outside. You'll need some white cloth that you'll use to form the ground, and I recommend something that is fairly pliable. You could use muslin or um, something else lightweight, even a cotton. I found some white flour sack towels at the craft store that I found prepackaged, so I used those for this. And then you'll need to purchase the little lights that will go on the inside as well as the snow that you'll put on top to turn it into the winter fairy garden. If you choose to make this a spring fairy garden or really any month other than winter, then you can obviously just skip the snow bit and stop before that final step. The first step in part two is to add some color to our clay tree. I have a couple of pictures up for my reference of scarlet oak bark and ash bark. And I plan to do this in about four layers of acrylic paint, working from a dark blackish brown through a uh, sort of reddish hue and then to more gray brown tones. That'll hopefully make it look like there's some depth working from the shadows all the way up to the light on the surface of the bark. I'll put up the paint colors on the screen for your reference as we go, and I hope you'll enjoy the painting process. Okay, so that's the painting bit done. Um, it didn't go exactly as I had planned. I was anticipating more um, sort of distinct ridges in the bark, but I didn't want to try and do them and result have them result in being too straight. So I aired a little on the side of more blotchy. I think I went a little overboard on that final coat of light paint. Uh, I think I actually did better on the on the back by the time I got. <laughs> more skilled at it. Should have started on the back, but the paint was a little bit wet there, so I didn't. Um, but overall, it looks more like a tree than it did before the paint, so that's going to count as a win. Next, my little bookstore needs to have some insides. 
I don't have everything planned for this yet. In fact, the only thing that I really have planned is that it needs to have books inside. Um, but I'm kind of leaning towards it needing to have a fireplace of some sort because it's underground. It seems like it would just be chilly and you want your bookstore to be nice and warm. So I think the easiest method is going to be to trace sort of a floor that I can use to glue pieces onto and then later just attach to my overall wooden base. So I'm going to first trace this on here and cut it out. I have to keep an eye on a couple of things as I work on this. The first is that I don't want to build unnecessary bookshelves in places that you won't be able to see. If you look through the windows, you're not going to be able to see, for instance, behind the door. That may actually be a good place for putting in whatever I decide to use to attach this to the base if I don't just glue it. I also have to remember that I don't want to block my access door that I've built in because then if there were a bookshelf in the way, it defeats the purpose of having the access door. And then the last thing to consider, and this is one of the most important, is that the whole thing has a height. So I want to make sure that I don't build anything that's too tall for the structure inside. So with those things being said, I'm going to experiment a little bit with what kind of stones I want to use for the fireplace and then build a ton of books and bookshelves out of craft foam. I want to keep the fireplace fairly simple, so I've picked a location where you can see it through the window, um, but I've moved it away from the back just so that it uh, fills a little bit more of a space. So I'm going to cut a chunk of this cardboard just to kind of provide the structure, and then I'll glue some stones, maybe these ones, maybe some others, into sort of a chimney pattern, and then I'll have to make sure later on that I put a chimney out the top. side of the bookshop is now complete. All I did was some bookshelves and my little fireplace to give the idea of the atmosphere, but I didn't bother with anything more detailed like chairs or tables. Um, so this part is done and everything is attached to this bottom piece of cardboard and when I'm ready for everything to go together I'll be able to connect all those pieces. Now that we've done some of the microstructure we have to return to the macrostructure and the big step here is going to be attaching everything to this wooden base. 
So I did want to make a quick comment that I cut off um, a little bit more of this styrofoam, <laughs> uh, sour cream, not styrofoam, container that is behind here just so that when you look through the window you don't see any of the container. So I took just a little bit off there. And the next step here, um, I've sort of placed this where I'd like it on the board. It takes up more of the board than I was originally expecting because it's a little bit bigger than I would, was imagining. But this one piece of wire here needs to be bent so that it stays within the um, limits of the board. So I'm going to do that quick. And I just bent it a little bit so that it... Um, is now parallel to the back edge here, which I think will provide a, a decent little bit of support. And then the next thing we'll need to do is mark out where the uh, screws are going to need to come up through the base and into those little loops of wire that we created when we were doing the uh, wire forming. So I've got my trusty little pencil here, and I've got one right in here, and I've got the ones underneath. And I've got a loop over here, and I may even create another loop in this back piece that I just bent. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those spots and generally draw an outline that I want to cut in the board for what will actually be the final base. I don't want to leave it as this large rectangle because it doesn't look very natural. So I'm going to sort of draw a rounded outline, leaving a decent amount of space back here because I still need to form the ground. And uh, same thing will hold over here, although it will be closer to the roots on this side. I added a couple additional marks for drill holes that I need to do. They always go in pairs, and that's because I'm going to run wire uh, through from the top down and then around underneath and back up through the top that I can twist to hold things in place. So I marked two spots on my floor of the bookstore. And then I marked three additional locations around the outside where I plan to use plastic mesh to form the ground. That'll allow me uh, to have a uh, very strong position to hold those pieces in place without having to rely entirely on glue. So with the board marked, all I have to do is cut out the frame and then drill the holes. I decided to make one change to my original plan. I was going to use these little wooden blocks to send a screw through from the bottom so it would be the base, the wire, and then a block on top to hold it in place. And I've decided that's not necessary and it would be kind of hard to hide some of these blocks in some of the spots that I have. So I'm just going to do it all with wire. So I, I expanded some of my holes that I had, my markings from a single hole where there was going to be just a place for a screw to two holes so that the wire can run up and down through it. So I need to go ahead and attach the pieces and we want to do this in the right order so that we don't get stuck with something where we um, can't get it in where it needs to be. So the first step is going to be putting this floor in and I have two spots marked for wire so I'm gonna use a little bit of glue but I'm gonna prep the wire first uh, so that I don't have the glue drying in a place I don't want it to. I hot glued the wire down as a safety precaution, not for security. Um, I'm just thinking ahead to when I may need to put the lights in through here and I don't want to run my fingers along the cut wires. So that piece is in and next we have this one, which is just going to be glued on and then I'll uh, wire in the tree. I'm going to glue properly along the front edge, meaning sort of on the inside, airing on the inside but um, trying to get kind of underneath. And then when I go around the outside, I'm just gonna put the bead of glue on the outside so I don't have to worry about trying to lift it and make it look proper. I'm being careful to try and align the front edge of my floor with the front edge of my facade.
With those pieces mounted, and here's the evidence that it's solid, I'm confident that we can move on to some of the more creative side of this and less of the technical side. So I have this other sour cream container to mount at some point when I get around to that side. But what I need to do is form the ground. And I've been thinking about this a lot, about whether it should be green based or brown based. And I have kind of mixed feelings, um, but I'm leaning towards a green uh, ground cover like dirt essentially with some green on top of it. So the bulk of my construction is going to be um, using this plastic mesh or plastic canvas. I've used this tactic once before in making a, um, a mask from Legend of Zelda for my husband. And basically you can use this to sort of create the overall shape. It works well with hot glue because it's plastic. And then you can form other things over top of it either craft foam or what I plan to do in the end is this cheesecloth. The reason I use this is because it holds paint well and I will be painting onto it later and it forms really neatly around things so it makes a very smooth cover um, so you want to have bumps in the ground because the ground isn't going to be perfectly flat but it does sort of smooth out all of the rough edges so to speak. So I'm gonna just sort of experiment my way through this laying the ground cover and then Eventually I'll add some rocks and moss and if I'm feeling really inspired, maybe some clay mushrooms. That's another step complete. You can see that I've tried to build a bit of fabric in everywhere that I wanted there to be dirt. And we've left our little access door so that you can get into the inside. And I've tried to bring everything down to the edge of the board and attach it firmly so that I can paint right up to it and paint on the board so that it sort of blends in. Next we get to paint. To paint the ground, I'm going to start with our old friend Burnt Umber and just try to lay a basic covering coat of the, the dark brown uh, using a foam brush. And then I'm going to switch to Nutmeg Brown, which is a, a lighter color of brown, and sort of try to add a little bit more texture. I want there to be a lot of texture because it's supposed to look sort of like just generic dirt. And then after that, I'll use a maybe a foam brush, maybe a stencil brush with my leaf green. I picked this green specifically because I want to add a little bit of brightness to the scene because it's fairly dark already and as soon as the white gets painted it's going to look very dark.
With the painting done, it's on to some rocks and moss that I found at the hardware store. I want to have a little sign that shows that we're at the bookstore, so that's going to be the next step. And now since I have my foam and my glue out, I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of little feet for the bottom of it. And this is just mostly to lift it up off of whatever surface it go goes on, especially because we have those wire pieces that are underneath. So hopefully this will lift those up off of that surface. Before we make it snow on our little fairy bookstore, there are a couple of things that I want to make note of that I did uh, in between times here. And those are that I trimmed the corners off of the sign. It felt a little too square and that doesn't especially fit with the fairy theme. A lot of things are crooked or um, fun shapes, so the true rectangle just wasn't quite right to me. Um, I also added some highlighting in color to the books. I used the same country gray paint that I've used in other places, and that was just to make the, the letter stand out a little bit better. I also added some moss in a couple of spots where it wasn't um, quite finished. I had missed the spot in here, along with um, some areas up here that I realized would show the light through once it's lit inside but not outside. You can see here that I did a little bit of a practice with the fake snow. I'm using um, uh, what's called Snow Text by Deco Art, um, and it adds texture and obviously the color. So I practiced on this piece of foam here, and it turned out pretty well. What I'm going to be really cautious about doing in this process is making sure that I use as little paint as possible, because I don't want to overdo. You can always add, but you don't want to do too much. And I'm a little apprehensive about this step just because I really like the way it looks right now and I don't want to do something that I will later regret. But I am going to stay committed to my uh, winter theme of this fairy garden building. So it is going to get a light dusting of snow and I just want to try and make it so that um, it lands where it would naturally. So um, in places that are underneath you wouldn't want snow there. It wouldn't make sense for it to fall. So I'm gonna have to kind of think in a like if I were to bring my paintbrush straight down, what will it hit? What will it not hit? Not angling my brush very much at all. I have a couple comments to make about the snow application process. I would definitely say to use a foam brush. I used um, a one inch uh, rectangular one in addition to a couple of round ones. I found more success with the smaller round foam brush as opposed to the larger one. Um, the larger one I was hoping would cover more area, but the smaller one was more precise. When you're using those brushes, don't push down very hard on them. That's when I found that I left circular ring patterns on the surface, and you don't want that. I found the greatest success when I started with very little paint on the brush and did sort of a light, um, just very thin layer of the um, snow followed by some slightly thicker bits. And to get the thicker ones, what you need to do is basically build up a little bit of the snow on your brush and be very careful, but you can put it on in a little bit more of a blotchy pattern. Make sure you get all your stones and your moss. And I found that with the red moss, which is dyed, 
um, that the dye came off in the snow that was on my brush. So sometimes you'll have to clean off the brush uh, when the snow gets mounded on it, and sometimes you'll have to clean it off because it picks up bits of moss or the coloring that's in the moss. Sometimes it's helpful to build up a little bit of extra snow in places. Uh, so maybe on the top of the sign, like I did, or just in little clumps here and there. Don't forget to catch your windowsills and your door trim and things of that nature on the building face. And um, in general, the rule is just use less when you start and then increase to more if you want more, but you can't go back once you've put it on. The last step is to add the lights to the inside, and I purchased a string of, I think they were actually called fairy lights on the internet, and they are USB powered, so I will be plugging them into my computer. But you could use Christmas lights or something else. The smaller the better, I think, so that you don't get too large a concentration of light in one area. So all we need to do is sort of shove the lights into the back, and um, I've already folded over the string of lights a little bit so that I would get definitely have some light at the end, and then a few more lights um, along the way. So I'll put this in through the back and then show you what it looks like when they're in. Thanks for supporting Tickled Fancy Crafting by watching this video. Click the like button to let me know that you enjoy the content and subscribe to see new Tickled Fancy Crafting videos in your feed. If you'd like to be informed directly about the content, ring the notifications bell. Comment with crafts that you would like to see in the future, and remember, you can make this.